Hey, welcome back, good people. This is going to be part three of my maze game tutorial using GDevelop. All right, so here we are starting up GDevelop, and sometimes you see this little pop-up. Uh, and if you read it, it says that an autosave file that is automatically backed up by GDevelop uh, is newer than the project file that exists. Would you like to load it instead? In general, I always click on OK, um, and that way I get the latest version. Um, OK. All right, so we're going to start with uh, some movement. Um, all right, so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to the maze events. Remember, the events tab is where you do your coding or your logic. This is called the events sheet. OK, so I've got three of my four movements here. Um, here is a W, so this is going to move my character upwards. And you can see that I'm adding an instant force of zero on the X axis. That's because I want my character to move up or down. And then I chose 200 on the Y axis. And this is a mistake. And the reason why is that when I press W, you'll see that my character goes downward. And that's just a reminder that um, the positive is actually downward on the Y axis in G developed. The negative is, is further up towards the top. So the origin of GDevelop is actually up here in the top left-hand corner. So this is 0, comma 0. Okay, so it's just backwards. Um, so if I come over here, I simply just need to make it negative 200 or negative whatever number you have. All right, now to finish up on the movement, remember that we can copy an entire event, but you have to select it first, and that can be a little tricky. You got to click down here in an open spot and then a blue bar goes around the condition and the action. You got to make sure that blue bar goes around it all. Then simply come over here and you can you can either right mouse click and choose copy or on a Mac you can press command C and that will copy it. On a Windows it's control C. Then simply come down here and you need to create a new event. So if you haven't already, click on add new event and you get a new event. I'm going to delete that one. Okay, so I've got my new event here, and now I can just press right mouse click, and I can do paste, or I can do command V to paste. Um, and you can see that when you paste, um, it gives you a new blank event anyway. Okay, so now I just need to change it. So I'm going to change this from W to S. Oops. And then this becomes a positive 200. And if you click right on the number, you can just change it right there, which is faster. If you double click on the action, then it opens up this whole screen and you can still change it there. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just different. Okay, good. All set. Always double check your behaviors up, down, left, right, and there we go. Okay, now once you've got all four of your movement directions working, now we're going to uh, actually group our code together uh, just so that this is more organized. So to make a group, you're going to come up over here, over on the right-hand side, you're going to see all these little addition buttons here. And you're going to click on um, this fourth one here, and you're going to come down here to where it says group. And you get a big uh, bold uh, bar here. And I'm going to go ahead and click in here, and I'm just going to call this uh, movement. So think of groups as folders uh, to help you organize your um, code. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put my mouse pointer on the left-hand side over here next to the blue bar. And I'm just going to drag that down and in. And notice how it goes in and indents, kind of like a layer in Photoshop. I'm just going to drag the other ones in. Now, you can drag in multiple at a time. Um, you can try clicking on a event, and you should be able to hold down the Shift key and click on a second one, much like you can click on multiple files. There we go. Um, so I think I've got them both selected, and drag them on down. Nope, it only took one. There we go. 
Okay, so you can see all four now belong to the group because they are indented. And now the cool thing you can do is here to the left of where it says movement, you can click on it and you can collapse it. There's a little triangle there. And so you can collapse it. So it's a lot easier on your eyes. It's more organized. Um, it's the same thing as opening or closing a folder if you're using an image editing program like Photoshop. Um, and it's just, it, it takes up less space because as you get doing more complex games, your code is going to get really a lot more complex and you're going to have to go searching through a huge list. So it's a, it's, it's a pain in the butt. Okay, so I know that this works. Um, I'm going to leave it open for now. All right, let's, um, let's get, my character is not flipping. So when I, when I go to the right, the character goes to the right. When I go to the left, the character um, does not flip in the direction of the left. You see, it goes backwards like Michael Jackson. So let's, uh, let's take care of that. So right here where it says um, the A is pressed, I'm going to click on Add Action. And remember, you have three ways of finding your conditions or actions. You can search up here in the top. You can put a condition or an action on one of your objects in your game. Or you can come over here and click on Other Actions, and you can search manually. Um, I know that I want to flip the player, so I'm going to click on Player. And I'm going to come over here, and I know I want to flip it. And you can see right down here under effects, here we go, flip the object horizontally. So I want that. And you get this choice here that says activate flipping, yes or no. Um, I'm going to leave it as no and click on OK. Let's see what happens. OK. And you simply test it out. And you can see because I said no. So I'm going to say flip yes and if you were quietly saying yes to yourself while i was doing that you'll see why here in just a moment there you go so my character does that and then if i press d he doesn't go back now so now what i need to do is i need to add that onto uh, d and i can just copy and paste this so i'm going to go ahead and press command c to copy and when i come back up here and it says add action you'll see it knows i want to paste it so it says, or paste actions. So I'm going to just click on paste. Now, here, I have to say no. When it says activate flipping, I have to choose no. And the reason why is because the sprite is normally looking to the right. Okay, so now when I test, you'll see there's A, there's D, and it works. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and save my game, file save. OK, so now we're going to go ahead and make our walls solid. Um, and this seems like a simple thing, but it's actually it's one of the trickier behaviors to do. So I'm going to go ahead and close my movement group here. And I'm just going to start right up here uh, with my empty event. If you don't have an empty event like that, make sure you click on Add a New Event. Um, okay, so I'm going to add a condition, and I'm going to go ahead and click on Player. And what I want is I want a um, collision. Um, so down here you'll see we have the collision category, and I'm going to go ahead and choose Collision. And I'm going to say, um, test the collision between two objects using their collision masks. So I'm going to go ahead and say Player. Oops, actually I meant, let me delete that. And I'm gonna say wall. And, I'm gonna, and the reason why is because it's the player over here colliding with the wall over here. Uh, I'll say okay. Okay, so you can see now player is in collision with wall. Then I'm gonna click on add actions. And when you click on add actions, um, when I was first learning this trick, this is why it took me a little while. Um, so what you want to do is you want to click on player. And then when you're looking for the different actions down here, it's actually, it's under the position category, 
and it's this one here, separate objects, which you might not think. Um, you would think, you know, the word solid uh, would be a good idea, but um, it's separate objects. So um, I'm going to click on wall because we want them to be separated. And you can see right here, move an object away from another using their collision masks. Um, and we'll go into what a mask is later on, but click on OK. OK, so here I am, forward, and I can't go forward anymore. And you see I am being stopped by my, by my solid wall. OK, there we go. It's working. Um, and this does not need to go inside the movement category. As a matter of fact, it shouldn't since it's not related. OK, next thing. Um, in my last video, um, I made um, I made a little mistake. Um, I said that we were going to make our game uh, larger. And what we did, in fact, was we made our game window that we play in. That became larger. Not the game world, but the game window. Um, so I'm going to undo that um, and change it back. And I'll show you why. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back up here to this very first blue button. It's called the Project Manager. And we're going to go to Game Settings, and we're going to go to Properties. And so right here, um, this originally, we're going to change this back to 800 by 600. Um, now, if you want to go a little bit smaller, you could maybe do something like you could do 1,000 by 800 okay and I'll show what that does and what that looks like okay so now you can see that I have a smaller window and by doing that you'll see that um, it doesn't show as much of the level and that's gonna do a couple things here that's gonna make the game more challenging because the player doesn't see as much of the maze and so it's gonna be more challenging which will then be more fun um, it will also, because it's a smaller window, it means it might fit on more devices, especially if we were to put this on a mobile device. Um, and so the game world is still there. If I go out here, you'll see that the game world is still there. Even though this is outside the, um, the black window here, it's still there. Um, so now what we need, now that our game viewing window is smaller, we need a camera that tracks our character and follows our character so we can actually see this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause my recording. I'll put in a few more walls and then we'll come back and I'll, we'll do the camera. Okay, we're back. I've just added in a few um, more walls here. So what we want to do is we're going to go back to our events sheet. And now this kind of behavior is going to be an interesting one. Uh, all right, so first of all, we need a new event. And this time we're not going to do a condition and when you don't do a condition to gdevelop it means that this will always be happening so if you in an event if you add an action with no condition it means that it will always be triggering it will always be happening so i'm going to come over here and click on add action and it's going to be on the player and the keyword that we're looking for here is camera and you will not see it. Okay, so when you can't see it over here, and I don't know why it's not over here, that would be a very popular one. Uh, so we have to go up here to the search, or you can click on other actions and go looking for it. And you will see right down here, here's layers and cameras. So you could click right on it. Um, and you'll see right here, center the camera on an object. So I'm gonna click on that. You could also click up here and type in camera, um, and you'll see that there's a whole bunch here but here it is center a camera on object now here's a really cool thing that the new version of gdevelop does um, there's tutorials um, by a really great gdevelop um, artist named wishforge um, and they put the tutorial links right here inside gdevelop so how cool is that um, and this is a great camera technique uh, to do really smooth camera movement and we'll cover this in my class as well um, I think it's good that you know both of these techniques. Um, his is a little bit more complex than what I'm about to show you, uh, but they both work. Um, all right, so 
I want to click on object and I want the camera to track the player. Okay. And it says anticipate the movement of the object. And I'm going to click on yes, it's there by default. And then I'm just going to click on OK. And that's it. So remember, no condition means it's always going to be doing this, centering the camera on the player. So let's see if it follows. So now you can see I'm only seeing a portion of my maze, which is good because now I have to actually explore. And as I go, you can see more is revealed. Now, if I were to leave an open spot, here's the question. Does my world go on forever? And it really does. Um, so just because uh, this black box is here, um, that's just showing the viewing area. All right. All right. And the final step we'll do in this video is um, we'll do a little bit of setup for the last video, which will be coming a little bit later on. So what you're going to want eventually is you're going to want a goal object, something for your character to uh, collide with and then take uh, them to the next level. So I've got a uh, key here and all I did was I clicked on add a new object. Um, I went from the asset store here, but you could click on um, new object from scratch sprite. You would then name your object, something like goal object. Or you could go ahead and call it, um, you know, key or, or coin or whatever you want. And then you click on add an animation and you're going to get an error message. Um, the error message is that the it can't have a space between um, between that there. Um, so if I did goal object like that, it'd be OK. And then you can click on edit with Piscal. And you could go ahead and go to town. All right. Um, if you have any empty objects like this that say new object and they don't have a sprite, you should always come over here, click on the dots, choose delete, and clean those up. Okay, so once you have your goal object, uh, the very last step we're going to do is we're going to make a second scene. And this is going to be our windscreen. Um, that makes it so that when we collide with the with the goal object, we then teleport to the wind scene. So what you want to do is you want to come back up here, click on the very first button, which is the project manager. You want to go here to where it says scenes, and you want to click to add a new scene. You then want to click on the three dots, and you want to choose rename, and I'm going to simply call this win. Okay, I'm going to press return. And then I'll simply um, click over here. Now, if you ever want to switch between the scenes, you simply come back over here to the project manager. You double click to open up the scene. And you'll see now I actually have um, these four tabs open. So I can go back to my maze, the maze events to do more coding. Here's my brand new win scene. And here's my win events. Um, each scene comes with its own events sheet. So you could have this, if you have lots of levels, your whole top row here could be filled up with scenes and their event sheets. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick file save. And that's gonna be it for this video tutorial. I will see you back in the next video tutorial where we will make a win scene. We will make it so that the player can restart um, the game from the win scene. And it will teleport them back here to the uh, to the level so they could play again. Um, of course, we need to finish up our maze so that way um, it's a lot more complete and a lot more fun. Um, and then I think that'll about wrap up this uh, video tutorial series. So thanks very much, everyone, and I'll see you next time.